All right, Logic fans, welcome back to our second video on 2.7. So this is video 2.7b, our second video on validity. And we just got done discussing uh, this particular argument, and we noted that it was valid. And it was valid because it is such that every assignment that makes all the premises true also makes its conclusion true. And we noted that these assignments, these three assignments right here, we noted that these assignments were irrelevant for assessing validity, and they're irrelevant because validity only concerns those assignments that makes all the premises true. And in these three assignments, it's not the case that all the premises are true. So all we're really looking for is, is it the case that in every assignment that makes all the premises true, the conclusion is also true? All right, so to drive these points home, let's uh, keep looking at some more examples here because that's how I think you're really going to understand um, how to determine with sort of mathematical rigor whether or not um, an inference is valid. So in this case, whether or not the inference to Q from these two uh, propositions uh, is valid. All right, um, let me get another example on the board. And actually, suppose I just changed one thing about this argument. Suppose I said, here's an argument I just pulled out of a hat. It's got these two premises got this conclusion is this argument valid or is this argument invalid pause now and see what you can come up with and then we'll come back and do it together okay hopefully you've had a chance to try this out but i'm going to build us through this together again for this example okay um but uh, basically, we want to look at this argument with fresh eyes, forgetting about the previous argument. And we're, we want to sort of say, okay, how many propositional constant types appear in this argument? Well, there's two, f and q. Therefore, this argument, like the previous argument, will have four possible assignments. Those assignments are as follows. Just do this in the regular old way. Nothing changing. I'm not pulling the carpet out from under you, okay? Same procedure as before. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure we have columns that have all of the premises and the conclusion sort of lined up next to each other. First the, con first the premises and then the conclusion. So go ahead and do that now if you haven't already. So now we've got the premises lined up here. Here's the two premises, okay? And we've got the conclusion in the far right column, all right? And uh, let's diagnose this argument on every possible assignment. So this is going to go true, false, true, true, once again. Not F, the second premise here is going to go uh, false, false, true, true, right? So it's gonna go false, false, true, true. And then Q is just retranscribed, so uh, you know you don't have to do this extra column. You could just use this, but um, for the sake of illustration, I am going to redo it on the right here, just so you can see premises and conclusion all lined up, nice and easy to read. So uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, we're just we're trying to figure out whether this argument is valid. It's valid just in case on every assignment which makes all the premises true, its conclusion is also true. Well, let's take a look at what we have here. Is this a situation, is this an assignment right here where all the premises are true? No, so we don't have to worry about that case. Is this a case where all the premises are true? No, so we don't have to worry about this particular assignment. Is this an assignment where all the premises are true? Yes, it is. And is it the case that uh, the conclusion is also true? It absolutely is, and so uh, so far so good, but validity doesn't require there to be just one case where all the premises are true and the conclusion is also true. Validity requires every assignment, so this one, this one, this one, where all the premises are true, the conclusion is also true. So we've got to check out this last case. Is this an assignment here where all the premises are true? Yes. Is the conclusion also true in that case? No. It is not, all right? So let me uh, highlight this here. So here's a case under bivalence, an assignment, where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Therefore, this argument is invalid. It is invalid, right? And if you think about it from the point of view of like, you know, we had if Fred is a square, then Fred is a quadrilateral. It's not the case that Fred is a square. Therefore, he's a quadrilateral, right? That doesn't follow at all. 
I mean, suppose Fred was just like a circle. Well, it's true that if he's a square, then he's a quadrilateral, right? It's also true that he's not a square. So all the premises are true. And the conclusion, namely that he's a quadrilateral, is false. So that's this case here, right? So namely, on the assignment where f and q are both false, it turns out that all the premises are true, right? And the conclusion is false. And therefore, this is an example of an invalid argument, okay? All right, let's try, uh, let's try one more here uh, before we press um, on some other things, but I want you to see another example. And in fact, I might as well just put on the board here the definition of invalidity, since that's what we saw here. It may help to see both validity and invalidity. So notice that an argument is invalid. Okay, so I'm going to formally define invalidity here. And remember, these are mutually exclusive and mutually exhaustive concepts. So pick an argument out of a hat. It's going to have exactly one of these two properties, right? If it has one, it does not have the other. All right, so every argument is one and only one of these. An argument is invalid if and only if there exists at least one assignment that makes all the premises true and the conclusion false. And notice that's exactly what happened in this case, provided there's at least one. So it doesn't matter if there's 10,000 assignments, okay, and 9,999 of them have all true premises and true conclusion, and there's one in there that has all true premises and a false conclusion, that argument is invalid. The truth of the premises does not guarantee, right, the truth of the conclusion. And so uh, that would be invalidity and you can see it satisfies that definition so provided you're not invalid you're valid provided you're not valid you're invalid okay uh, let's look at another example and see how you do with it okay so I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to work this one out and uh, we'll slowly construct it together I'll give you some hints along the way but here's an argument I just pulled out of a hat okay it's got three premises this time remember an argument is a set of finitely many prem um, a set of finitely many propositions, right? So the past couple examples, we only had uh, two premises and a conclusion. In this case, we've got uh, three premises and a conclusion. And so um, what I want you to do is take a look at this and decide whether or not this argument is valid or invalid. So pause now, give it a try on your own, and then we'll come back and try it together. All right, so your first hint, how many propositional constant types appear in this particular argument? Okay, so the answer is four. Therefore, this argument will consist of two to the four equals 16 assignments. It has 16 possible assignments. Bit brutal, I know, but I want you to see one like this um, that j just to help hone your instincts and understanding of validity. So you're going to have 16 possible um truth to, uh, assignments here. So uh, try now to fill it in from there if you haven't already. I'll give you a second to pause it and then we'll do it together. Okay, so this particular case is going to have uh, 16 possible assignments. That's where they're going to go right here and you've got your four uh, propositional constants lined up across the top. So Let's uh, go ahead and fill this in together. So this is just going to go true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. And it looks like I'm going to run out of space here. So we're going to switch over to a different view. And then this one's going to double up. Okay, so this is the exact same process as before. Nothing is changing, okay? I'm constructing this the exact same way you've constructed all your other truth tables. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then we're gonna have eight trues and eight falses here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is all eight possible assignments of for the argument in question. All right, so let's uh yeah. That should give you a good view of them. This is all eight. So now looking back at our argument, we want to have all the premises and the conclusion lined up nice and neat. So let's go ahead and do that now. 
So I'm hoping that you can see all of this, but what we have here is we have our 16 assignments. They're right here. So here's the assignment where A, B, C, and D are all true. Here's the assignment where A, B, C, and D are all false. All right. And then we've got our first premise, our second premise, our third premise, and our conclusion all lined up and ready to go. And so what we have to do is figure out what happens to the premises and conclusion on all these different assignments. So it's a little bit of work, but um, it's pretty easy to do. So we have A wedge B, which is this column, wedge, the second column, this column, right? So we're going to go true, 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 false, 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 false. All right. Then we've got the first column here, arrow the third column, A, arrow, C. So we're going to go uh, true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then every single one of these is going to be true because they all have false antecedents. So not that bad, right? Pretty easy to do. And then we've got the second column, arrow, the fourth column. So this column, arrow, the fourth column, right? And uh, one quick way to do this, you don't have to do it this way, you can just go through it, but uh, one thing you do is you know that all of these have a false antecedent, right? So this is a false antecedent here. So those four are going to be true, one, two, three, four. And then you also know that these four are all going to be true because they have false antecedents, right? And then uh, you're really just sort of looking for the cases where they have um, a false um uh, consequent. So this one's going to turn out to be false. This one's going to turn out to be false. Uh, this one is going to be false. Where else do we have a false antecedent? And so all the other ones are going to be, or false consequent, sorry. That's what I meant, false consequent. And so all of these are going to be uh, true, like that, right? So you got true arrow, true is true, true arrow, false is false, and so on all the way down. Then we've got C or D, so it's just this column here, the third column, wedge, the fourth column. So we'll go through this true, 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 false, true, 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 false, true, 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 false, true, 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 false, okay? And voila, we've got our truth table for the big argument in question. Now. The definition of validity. On every assignment where all the premises are true, the conclusion also has to be true. So we've got to go through all 16 of these and look for the cases where all the premises are true. Is this a case right here, this assignment right here, is that one where all the premises are true? And the answer is yes. And so I'm going to highlight that case for us. Is this a case where all the premises are true? No. Is this a case where all the premises are true? No. Is this? No. Is this a case where all the premises are true? Yes. So is the one right beneath it. That's a case where all the premises are true. So we've got to check out these cases, right? Not a case where all the premises are true. Not a case where all the premises are true. This is a case where all the premises are true. This is not a case where all the premises are true. This is a case where all the premises are true. Uh, this is not a case where all the premises are true. And uh, these are all F here, so none of these are cases where all the premises are true. So out of the 16 assignments, we've got one, two, three, four, five cases where all the premises are true. Okay? The definition of validity requires that in every assignment where all the premises are true, this five out of uh, 16, that it also be the case that the conclusion is true. And look at that, in every single one of them, it is. Therefore, this is, in fact, a valid argument, okay? There is no case where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false, okay? So that's validity. You know, the, the, the premises guarantee the conclusion, and we're just not concerned about the cases where, um, where it's not the case that all the premises are true. And yeah, this is indeed a, a valid argument. Um, you can kind of intuitively check that, right? This says, well, let's just spill on to the next video and I'll, and I'll, and I'll pick up the conversation right there. So look for video 2.7C. Uh,